Hey everyone, Megan Marshall here, director of the Hugh C. Hyde Living Writers series, and I'm joined by my fabulous co-host, resource librarian, Markle Tumlin. Hi, Markle. Hello, Megan, and hello everybody out there in uh, YouTube land and yes. Facebook land and all the other lands out there on the internet. Yes, <laughs> all out in the, the digital ether. Thank you for, <laughs> for joining us. Um, so we're excited to share with you the fall 2024 lineup of the Living Writers series. But before we jump into that, Markle, it's been a few months since I've seen you. Mm -hmm. uh, how was your summer? Give me a highlight. My summer was great. And I would say if I had to pick one highlight, it would probably be my uh, the week I spent in Spain with my daughter and her family. You know, they live in the UK and, you know, oftentimes I'll go visit. And we'll take a little trip together. And this year we went to Madrid for a week and took a day trip to Barcelona. And it was amazing. And if you haven't been, you should book a trip right now because it was fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that does sound amazing. I am already uh, I'm feeling jealous, uh, but happy that it was such a wonderful time and you got to spend, uh, you know, some some quality time with the family. Yeah, I got two weeks in the UK too, you know, so that was uh, kind of on either side of that week that we spent in Spain. Well, what about you? What, what was your highlight? Um, I would say my highlight was uh, going to visit a friend in Chicago. Uh, Sean and I went and um, it was at the very beginning of the summer, so it wasn't too hot, but we kind of did all the things. It was like a Ferris Bueller's Day Off, but oh, you know, okay. it was a, little, a little bit more than a day in, in about a week. We went to a Cubs game. We went to a music festival. Mm -hmm. We did the uh, the architecture boat tour and ate a lot of good food and saw a oh, lot yeah. of cool sights. So I just, I love Chicago. It's a really amazing city. Did you have any deep dish while you were there? You know, we are, I'm, I might, I'm, I, people might disagree with this, but I'm not a fan of the deep dish. Okay. I prefer, you know, the sort of the thinner, the thinner crust. I prefer the New York style myself. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, a great spot. Um, it's called Flo and Sandy's. It's like a kind of a, a restaurant bar that's by uh, the place where my friend lives and she likes to frequent there. And they have really, really good kind of a, it's almost like an in-between Chicago slash New York style. So not quite okay. as thin, but not the deep dish. It was excellent. Oh, so, very nice. Very we did nice. get some good pizza. <laughs> excellent. Excellent. And, I, and I, I've only been to Wrigley once, but that's always a fun thing to do. Oh, yeah. I mean, historic location. It was a fun game, always a fun crowd. And we love baseball. So it's always kind of cool to get to see how uh, how the games and how the crowd kind of, you know, reacts in, in different stadiums yeah. aside from Petco. Who, 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 who the Cubs play? Do you remember? Oh, my gosh. Sean's going to be so mad at me for not remembering. But well, the only reason I ask is because the one game I went to was so long ago that they, that the Cubs were playing the Montreal Expos. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. No, I, I, I don't even want to try to remember because someone might go in and, and, and debunk okay. whatever I said, but. Well, we'll just leave, we'll just leave that there then. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah. We, we had fun. Um, and it, yeah, the crowd was awesome and we walked around the stadium a little bit. And so it was, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was a good time. Definitely the highlight of my summer. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I'm glad you got to go. Thank you. Uh, all right. Well, let's jump into kind of taking y'all through what you can expect from living writers this semester. So we're going to be starting off and I will say mostly this semester with the exception of one event, they're all in person love mm -hmm. library room 430. So if you can, please join us. But for the most part, as we have been doing, uh, those in-person events are gonna be recorded. So if you can't catch us in person, then you're welcome to watch the recording afterward on our YouTube channel. So we're gonna be starting off in person on September 25th with two amazing poets. We have Adam O. Davis and Arthur Kazakian. Um, Adam is a, a local poet uh, in San Diego. He won the... Uh, Poetry International Prize a couple years ago. He's an amazing poet. And Arthur Kazakian is a graduate of SDSU's MFA program. So I always love a chance to celebrate our alums and of course, all our local writers as well. Yeah, and this I think this is gonna be a really fun reading. I love the titles of their books we were discussing just a few minutes ago. The uh, uh, Adam's book is uh, Index of Haunted Houses. Yes. And Arthur's book is The Book of Redacted Paintings. And I just like the fact that both of those, yeah, there you go, right there. I've got a copy. I can't reach mine because it's a little yeah. bit far, far from me now, but it's right over there, believe me. And uh, uh, 
I just like the fact that both of them kind of have a sense of something missing, something mysterious about them. Why is the painting redacted? Why is the house haunted? Who's missing? What's missing from the painting? So I kind of like that there's kind of a common thing going on there. But they both really sound like interesting persons. I was really curious when I was reading about Adam, about his podcast that he used to do about Poetry Goes to the Movies. Yeah. And I found that online. I want to go in and listen to a couple of those. I know he hasn't done one in a while. I'd be curious to know if he's going to do some more of those because it just sounded like a really interesting podcast series. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've had a chance to listen to any of those, but I just love the the, the idea. Yeah, I, I haven't. I was also intrigued by uh, by the name. Maybe that's something in the Q&A um, that might come mm -hmm. out. Ask him a little bit about that. Um, and then also, I mean, I think it's there, as you mentioned, the um, connections between just the title of their books, I think their work kind of speaks, speaks to one another. So I think they'll be a great, you know, sort of reading in tandem. Um, and both have got a lot of accolades, won a lot of awards, um, mm -hmm. have a work in several prestigious journals. So I think that that's going to be a, a great way to, to start out the semester. Yeah, and I think it's also interesting that Arthur will only be will be one of two Iranian Americans who will be reading this semester, mm -hmm. and so I, you know, I think that's really really cool too. I'm not sure we we probably had some in the past, but we've had so many writers come through over the years. I don't remember all of them, but I just thought that was was kind of interesting as well. Yeah, and I actually I thought so. Uh, the one of the well the penultimate event that we're going to have is another uh, Iranian American author and. Um, I thought that it was sort of a nice kind of balance because Arthur's book, though he's also um, uh, speaking from an Armenian um, perspective as well as kind of more right. of the male uh, uh, speaker searching for his father. And then in this other book that we'll talk about in just a second, it has more of the woman's perspective. Um, so I like that we're gonna have that balance too this semester. Truly. Um, and I also wanna point out that Arthur was a student in my living writers class Oh, okay. uh, several years ago and some of the the poems that made it in different versions into the book of redacted paintings came out you know were workshopped during his time at SDSU so it's sort of always a sweet sweet homecoming to welcome oh, yeah. a student who was in the class back to be a featured reader for the series well it's an inspiration to all the students that are in your class now too so oh, yes yes, yes I'm absolutely. sure they appreciate it so all right. Um, next up, we're going to have an in-person event Wednesday, October 23rd, 7 p.m. We have acclaimed author and educator Jessica Kim. Um, she's predominantly a, a middle grade YA author. So she's going to be reading from her recent novel, which is called Stand Up Yumi Chung. And I wanted to mention that this event is generously sponsored by SDSU's National Center for the Study of Children's Literature. So I have to a big shout out to Dr. LaShawn uh, Davis for helping us out with that. Oh, actually, yeah, I've already let our children's librarian know about this as well. So hope to, hope to see her there that night. But yeah, what a fun book and a fun cover. I mean, it just looks, you know, like, a, a, you know, like a real pleasure. And uh, uh at any rate, one, I don't know if you, you've probably gone in and looked at Jessica's website, but I, I, I was really impressed by her, her list of 10 things about me. I don't know if you saw that list that she said. Yeah, yeah, about. I did. Mm -hmm. And I love that it, she mentioned that she loves musical theater. And I'd be interested to hear how that might inform some of the things that she tries to do on the page. Mm -hmm. Well, her, yeah. the young protagonist in Stand Up Yumi Chung is a, uh, sort of aspiring to be a stand-up comedian and wants mm -hmm. a special on Netflix. So, you know, I imagine this idea of the performance oh, yeah. aspect. Performance, kind of, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's into that. Well, and maybe she did some performing when she spent 10 years teaching, what was it, third, fourth, and fifth grade? I Yeah, I imagine <laughs> you definitely have to do some performing. Oh, yeah, grab <laughs> at, the yeah, attention. At, yeah. Exactly. Teach, teaching at any age, you know, there's a little performance aspect to being oh, yeah. in the classroom, so. Yeah, well, anyway, that'll be a really good one. And and I like to see the fact that we're getting more of these YA and, and uh, writers for younger people, because I think there's a real market for that. Mm -hmm. You know, being well, just going to a lot of bookstores and being in the library world, I just see a lot more of that all the time. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I'm hoping that, you know, uh, with Dr. Daly and the study for, you know, the or the Center oh, yeah. for Study of Children's Literature, that we'll be able to bring in other YA or middle grade or even children's mm -hmm. authors, because it's really, you know, it's it's a it's a it's a popular market right now. So, you know, we're we're mm -hmm. looking to highlight those books for sure. Very nice. All right. Um and next then after that. Yeah, we have also in October, um, Wednesday, October 30th, so the day before Halloween. 
um, in person, 7 p.m., room 430 in the library. We have uh, author Jeffrey Del Lofton, who's going to be reading from uh, his debut novel, which is kind of, it's a semi, uh, or based on his own personal experience, you know, semi-autobiographical uh, novel, which is called Red Clay Susie. It's like this. It's yeah. Like this. Does, um, does it have a photo of him on the jacket there for... for it, let's see if I could throw it. It's very small, but you know, you can oh, see okay. it. If you look on our flyers, there's Jeffrey. I was Del just Lofton. wondering, because in so many of the photos I saw of him online, he had the, like the bow tie and he just looked very dapper and very sharp. Yes. I, I, think... really, I really appreciated his sense of style. That's... <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, yeah, perhaps yeah. that, you know, I, I don't know if that comes from um, uh, his living in a community in the, in the deep South, um, mm -hmm. um, but he's also a, a senior advisor at the Library of Congress. Yes, I did notice that. I noticed that, you know, we talked about uh, Jessica Kim enjoying musical theater. Well, well uh, Jeffrey actually has a background in theater. I think he has an undergraduate degree in that. He got his, his master's degree was in library science and, and public administration. But yeah, I'm always kind of interested when somebody gets a library degree for obvious reasons. I know, yes. <laughs> oh yeah, well, we love to support our librarians or anyone, you know, connected yeah. in that community, absolutely. Um, well, but anyway, yeah, I think that should be a really good one. Yeah, kind of like the uh, stand-up Yumi Chung has a like a coming of age arc, um, as he describes it, it's like a fictionalized memoir um, written through the lens of um, being someone who's an outsider, um, gay and living with a disability in a conservative family. So I think it's going to speak to a lot of different readers. Um, you know, the character is very compelling. The prose is very compelling. So I'm excited mm -hmm. to see him read. Oh, yeah. Looking forward to it as well. All right, next up we have uh, our virtual event. So again, this is the only virtual event of the um, semester, which is on Wednesday, November 6th, 7 p.m. with the award-winning poet and editor, Allison Joseph. So in addition to answering some questions from our virtual attendees, she's gonna be sharing selections from her most recent collection, which is called Confessions of a Barefaced Woman. Um, and one of the things I love about these poems uh, is that they're kind of a, about exposing vulnerability, but with almost a, a sort of, in some ways, a, like a comic levity to it. Um, mm -hmm. And she's a she's a very experienced poet, also a really talented editor of um, Crab Orchard Review, uh, publisher of No Chair Press, director of Writers in Common. So she really has vast experience in the literary, poetry, and publishing world. So I think she's in addition to just giving a compelling reading and sharing her wonderful poems, she's also a really great resource for, for the students or for anyone who, you know, is interested in any of those mm -hmm. aspects. Yeah, and I appreciate the fact that she has a poem in there about libraries. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, right. Support your librarian. Yeah, in your the library. public library, I think was the name of it, wasn't it? In the something like that. It was uh, in the public library. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. So, yeah. yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. I, I always appreciate that, so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that'll be great. And again, you know, wonderful for anyone who is not local or who just can't make it to campus to to come in person. Join us on Zoom. You can find the link on any of our, you know, the calendars, our website, the SDSU MFA website. Click on Living Writers and uh, or keep an eye out on Facebook, social media platforms for uh, more information there if you want to join the Zoom. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right, so now we've, we've come to the, the penultimate event of the semester uh, in person Wednesday, November 20th. We have the Laura Akuma Memorial Reading feature award-winning author, uh, Susie Etesham Zadeh, who's gonna be reading from her award-winning collection of short stories, which is called Zan. And Zan is, means woman in Farsi. And I just want to mention again that this is a really special reading that we get to do each semester, um, thanks to an endowment created by her family and friends. Um, Lori Akuma was an MFA student and also a teacher at SDSU. And after she passed, uh, her family set aside this endowment to bring in uh, women writers, you know, especially women writers who have been historically marginalized. So we're very, very thankful for their support. Um, in that we can invite a wonderful woman writer to read each semester in Lori's honor. Yeah, that's wonderful. And I've really enjoyed reading a little bit about her backstory too. Uh, yes. The way that she kind of went back and forth between the two countries and mm -hmm. she kept this diary for all those years before she started writing professionally and just had a really interesting, so it was very inspirational for me to read about her. 
-hmm. And uh, also the fact that she's, I read that somewhere that she had taught on three different continents in three different languages. Yes. And I was thinking, well, how many people can do that? You know? <laughs> right. <And> so, I can't. <laughs> no, I, uh, I would have to learn at least two other languages. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, I, I don't think my old college French is going to come back to me in enough time to go teach a class there. But uh, but at any rate, I found her story really inspirational and reading about the book. I mean, you know, it's like about Iranian women, but it's like women in Iran, Amer Iranian America. I mean, really in both countries and all different kinds of situations. It just sounds really, really fantastic. So. Yeah, I was drawn to it. I read one of the stories um, as an excerpt in a uh, Lit Hub, which is a, a, a oh, yeah. online yeah journal that I subscribe to, and I was really taken by it. And then I f found out that it won the twenty twenty two Dzank Short Story Collection Prize. And I like I like Dzank Press. They're a nonprofit press, um, and other authors like. Um, Lance Olson, who we love, mm -hmm. has done stuff with Zank in the past. And so I thought, okay, well, I mean, if that's, you know, the, the other stories must yeah. be good too. It's that fact that it won the short story prize. Yeah. So I, I I definitely, I was not let down and very happy that she's going to come out. And like you said, talk about her very diverse experience. And she's done work as a translator, also as an editor. Um, so I think just like with Allison Joseph, she's going to have a, a lot of great resources or information to share. Yeah, and, and am I correct? Is she the one who lives in Georgia? Yes, and like I yeah, it was farm, really interesting with her background that she that she settled on a farm in Georgia. You know, I found that very interesting as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, and I, I'm hoping she'll kind of talk about that. How she, all of all the places where she's lived and traveled, that she kind of ended up in Woodstock, Georgia. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you never know where you're going to end up, do you? <laughs> exactly. Hey, you know, inspiration comes from all different places. Yes, indeed. And All then right. finally. Oh, yes. And then finally we have, I'm not very excited about this event because it celebrates our local community, SDSU, uh, a lot of student run presses. So this is Wednesday, December 4th, in person, 7 p.m. We're going to have a reading and publishing salon celebrating SDSU's acclaimed publications, including Poetry International, which of course has a special place in my heart. Um, SDSU Press and some of its uh, imprints like a uh, model comics, Chopin Books and others, uh, Pacific Review and Splice and more. So there lots and lots, yes, of, of, of things for folks of all different, uh, you know, uh, backgrounds or proclivities. We've got poetry, we've got fiction, we've got nonfiction, we've got uh, scholarly work. And also just, uh, as I mentioned, a way to kind of celebrate these really amazing award-winning SDSU yeah. publications. Yes, there's something for everybody at this one. So yes. I hope everybody will come. Mm -hmm. Yes, me me as well. And it was, I was thinking, so Poetry International, Splice, Pacific Review all have new issues that are coming out this year. And, you know, thinking about separate events, but like, hey, why not? Why don't we all get together and celebrates and have a chance to feature all of the wonderful uh, contributors to these uh, respective journals and also the editors who have helped to, to make all this happen, to put the work together, to curate yes. the work. And then that, you know, the faculty advisors and editors in chief uh, who have also helped to kind of, you know, steer the, the projects along and see it through to its final uh, sort of stages and into fruition. So I think it's it's going to be a, a wonderful event to kind of round out the semester for us. Yeah, it's a chance for them to promote all the work that they're doing, but it's a chance for us to kind of recognize and appreciate what they're doing. And so that, that'll it'll be a good opportunity for both both them and us. Yes, yeah, ab absolutely. And so, you know, again, come if you just want to hear some great work or if you are interested in learning more about what the publishing and editing world looks like. So we'll have, again, like we said, a little something for everybody. And then we'll ride off yeah. into the winter break sunset or something like That's that. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think that uh, takes us through all of our wonderful events for the fall. Um, we hope to see you either in person, virtually, or come visit the YouTube page. Uh, subscribe, comment, tell us what you think. You know, we'd love to connect with our community as fellow literary citizens. So we hope to see you at some point. Yes, indeed. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you there.
All right, yes, thank you all.